Okay, gang, let's go ahead and get started with the reading. We're going to put nine cards down. We will clarify with La Vida Sibila, and uh, we will wrap it up with a brand new Oracle card, and I'll tell you what the name of those cards are here in a moment, okay? All right, here we go. The Eight of Cups. Oh, wow. The Hanged Man. The Three of Wands. The Magician. The Nine of Coins. The King of Cups. Wow. The Page of Pentacles. Hmm. The Queen of Pentacles. Oh, wow. And the Page of Wands. Well, I will say <clears throat> let's see what's under the deck, shall we? Oh, the Three of Pentacles. Well, now. Let me check something. There's something that this Nine of Pentacles is saying to me. Hold on, let me give me a little book. There's something that this Nine is saying to me. Okay. I feel that for someone or someone out there, there has been, um, start over, past, present, future, past, present, future, interplay of the cards. Uh, let's see. I have one, two, three pentacles, one, two wands cards two cups and two major arcana cards. In the spread itself, I have one, two, three, four court cards. Now, normally uh, these would be uh, interpreted as four people or at the very least a bunch of people involved in this situation. However, uh, these read like messages to me. They always do. This is what pa pages bring news or the start of something new or that a message will come that will start something new right it will it will kind of move a situation along so like i kind of look at those like a movement card but not quite it is movement or 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 uh yeah movement but that comes because you got some kind of news or message now I think if I had to be, and I'm a little confused, I'm not going to lie, about the first two cards that came down. The Eight of Cups and the um, Hanged Man. The reason why the Eight of Cups speaks to shame or regret um, or, let me let me give it to you. And I can't just pick out one thing to talk to you about about Casanova because he was quite scandalous in his day. Uh, I think they like to, to, to term him as the libertine. 
So the keywords are the unexpected, shame, betrayal, up-to-date evaluation, concreteness, and coming back to reality. And I would dare say that this is true. Something unexpected happened, uh, and just when you thought that the person may have been caught red-handed or uh, you have discovered what that thing is, the person escapes. Almost as if you had the person, there was no way they could ex escape, but they, they were able to escape this. Um, the story behind this, Casanova was jailed many times, but the very first time that he was jailed, he was sentenced to seven years, and he plotted and planned his way out of it. Um, he He was able to convince uh, patrons and benefactors and more specifically a priest who, who was locked in jail with them uh, to escape, right? One time now he tried to escape, he didn't get away. But the, the very first time he escaped, he got away, he absconded. Now, I, I do feel for some of you, this is the idea that particularly here on this left side, um, maybe you have the feeling as though someone tricked you, uh, that someone promised you something uh, that you so wanted to believe in, and they ended up, in a sense, kind of robbing you. Okay, this is the the, the greedy purchaser. Who, who looks who looks with his eyes and determines what it is he wants to steal. So there's this reference of theft here. This this reference of um, somebody taking something that doesn't belong to them. Whether this is faith, this is trust, and and we see that the person does so in quite a daring manner. Um, even this card in the center is called theft, liberation, the way out, um, or giving up something for material gain. And maybe there is some financial element, uh, involved in this. Like maybe somebody conned you in some way. Um, maybe this was an, an online Lothario. Sometimes to me, um, when I'm reading with the, um, Casanova, what I have seen in my own um, experience is that sometimes we're dealing with people that we are either at a distance from, long distance communication, or it, it is literally someone that we have met um, over the internet, which would imply that for all intents and purposes, we don't have a real grip or a real handle on whatever this the, the, the person is about to begin with or the situation. Now, <clears throat> this card down this this row down the center, we see this descent, this escape uh, into a situation where, well, we see him making love to a woman with her husband lying right next to him. So it speaks to an air of daring as well. Okay, uh, an air of um, I'm going to take the risk anyway. But I think in taking the risk, it's also a way out. Uh, it is theft, quote unquote, in broad daylight. But there's also liberation in this idea that I'm going to do it anyway. If I get caught, so what? This queen of pentacles, I think, is what stands out the most to me, simply because of the meaning of the card. And this is the, the meaning of represents this idea of, let me give it to you, opulence, security, arrogance, insolence, and presumption. Note, the gesture on this, being performed on this card, is the gesture of being able to seduce or to get what one wants without even having to make an effort. Interesting, is it not? The Three of Wands. This one stands out to me too. 
the completion of seduction, giving pleasure, initiative, and decision. As if to say, what was done and the manner in which it was done uh, has concluded. And it was done just for the sake that someone could do it. Okay, does that does, does that make any sense? Um, I I find that the fact that he has on a full mask says that you never saw the real person for who they are. They may have been able to, I don't know, make you feel warm, fuzzy, protected, whatever the case may be, but you never really got an opportunity to know the person, see the person behind the mask. To me, the act that he is closing has his legs closed away from us in the photograph. They're towards the wall. Speaks to this idea that the person, um, for all intents and purposes, kind of kept us at a distance. Okay, sometimes it's not what they say, it's what they do. Uh, that speaks more than what the face will show you. Yes? It is the two pages. Let me give you the meanings. Out of all the cards in this odd little story, it is the pages the knave, the purchaser, he looks with greedy eyes and decides what to buy. With the wands, it says the guard, the defense of others, loyalty, courage, and discretion. Now, this may be this individual who may come up to kind of, um, because he speaks to the protector and the benefactor, right? Um, the implication is such that it is someone, in a sense, that we can trust, but even still, it's not someone we know very well. It's someone who um, may be in our circle of acquaintances, but it's not someone we are intimately connected with. Maybe this is the person who steps forward in your defense at this particular time. Um, what I'm trying to pick up on, I don't see any... Um, repeater numbers except for the two pages. Now, normally the two pages will speak to perhaps sometimes a small inconsequential illness like a head cold. But to me, they um, speak to two different types of messages. One based upon the carnal, the third dimensional, the other one based upon the defense of what's doing right. They're, they're not necessarily at odds, yes and no. This person's holding a coin and that person's got a stick. Which one wins? Well, the stick will beat out the coin every time, save for if there's a bit of bribery going on. But I don't get that. I do sense that it is this queen of coins person, uh, this earth sign female who is at the center of this. Now, I don't know if there's two choices that you had. If you look at the imagery on this, this is someone getting caught and then someone moving away. And yet, even still, this speaks to stolen moments, in, in a sense. To me, it does. But I, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why this... Let me give you the story behind this magician card. Casanova, after escaping from prison and many other things, ended up going, I forget exactly what city it was, but this was some time later. And he ran up on a, uh, a, a countess whom he convinced that he could change her into a young man. Stole thousands of dollars for the woman and in fact almost broke her. Right. But yet the idea is such that was she really a victim or did she open herself up to this idea for somebody like that to come in? She was a dabbler in uh, 
what they call the mysteries, the occult. Casanova had gained a reputation and had studied somewhat in the Freemasonry and the secret orders and the secret societies. So he was kind of this person who, with a few uh, introductory words from somebody who knew him, was able to kind of ply his way into this woman's life and convince her of these things and take all of her money. So the question becomes, um, am I the victim or am I not the victim? Um, did I, um, leave myself open for this or did I invite this sin? And the truth of the matter is it could be a bit of both, <laughs> you know, um, and neither one of these characters have their faces revealed. She is the only one who has her face revealed as a court card, completely revealed. And I get the sense that this was something repeating as if it's, it, it's not the first time. Does that make any sense? I don't know if it does. <clears throat> It is this king of cups. So maybe the person that you are dealing with, and, and, and this is going to sound kind of odd, but you guys understand when I read cards, I'm reading energies, not the cards. And therefore, this energy is putting off two things. This is not a situation. This reads like two different people. This looks like someone that you have had dealings with before. But it also reads like someone who may come up in the future that might be able to come to your defense. I don't necessarily feel that this is a um, return of somebody. Although, yeah, somebody you've dealt with before. But this person coming up is not the same person. I, I, don't, I don't know if that makes any sense. Now, this card which is kind of like the um, advice or the energy as it is now. To make a show of things, to reify, to evaluate according to material value. Holy shit. <laughs> you, you understand why I just said that. Um, it says to buy, but not to conquer. Note, Casanova was not adverse to the company of prostitutes. In other words, he <clears throat> wanted the company of someone to spend time with him, but he really wasn't interested in, in really investing in that person. Does that make any sense? Okay, something temporary. The reason why I said holy shit was because behind this is a king of coins. So there's people here. It's implied. There's three people here. There's three people there. Of course, we've got at least four people here. But here's three people in the card. And then you have three big, major, mature court cards here. I don't know if this is saying that the person has moved on. To the same thing or not so because this deck speaks in a different language what I do want to do is to see if because I just have these two major arcana cards what can these what other extra information can these pip cards and it's how about that it's only three pip cards huh a cup a coin and a wand those are our three areas, our emotions, our actions, and our passions or desires or anger, as it were. Um, how about that? Let me see what I can come up with here, if anything. Uh, the cards may make me work for it. What, what am I looking at? Okay, here we go. The Eight of Cups. Okay, I'm way down in the swords. Let me get back up here. 
the Eight of Cups. Now, when the Eight of Cups appears next to the Magician, it is informing you that you have the ability to reach your full potential, but it also asks that you think and consider very carefully before making any important or major decisions. Do not allow anyone to sway or hinder you as only you know what is right for you, so stick to your guns. I don't know if this is somebody offering you something. Uh, what What's the word? Or trying to sway you off the path? I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at these wands. Nothing. And let's look at these pentacles. Nothing. Tells me nothing. I think the cards are going to... make me really work for this. Hold on. Hmm. The Page of Wands may suggest that family problems are coming to an end and a close friend could help enlighten you and you will see things from a new perspective. With many court cards, it is implying that many people are involved in a situation. I don't get why she's sandwiched between two wands, I mean two pages. Well, let's go to the Sabilis. I think if I had to pick a card, the first would be this Three of Wands. There's just something about the way the card has landed above this king where he is sandwiched in by two wands. A three and a page. Loyalty, defense of others. There is something about the dress of this Suspiri. La nemica. Dispiacere. Hmm. 
looks as though there's another woman. He has caused you some grief and sleepless nights. With some unexpected news. The page. The militare reversed. Hmm. The amalato. The sick person. The lecherezza. Recklessness, carefree, a mistake. Huh. I'm going to look at this other page. The letter reversed. The thief reversed. The Lamonte, the male lover. Well, well, okay. This is interesting. I don't really know what the hell's going on, but it's in <laughs> but it's interesting. I'm not laughing if um uh, somebody recognizes this story, but um let me take a look. This is the Sospiri. The card of great anxiety and tears and preoccupation. It is caused by circumstances that you are aware of. And while the problem lies else while the problem lies, lies elsewhere. As you can see, the arrow above her head tells you what the problem is. And it feels like this is a missed opportunity because as you can see your ship has sailed without you. Now, it indicates the presence of discordant energy, whether this is a situation or a person or even your inner self. It is the card of desperate desires, unrequited love, and troubled relationship caused by people who do not know how to love unselfishly. It is the card that represents waiting and long delays that are the cause of extreme tension. There is uncertainty around your fate or the fate of someone or a situation dear to your heart. It is not caused by a past event, but is due to something being projected into the future. In essence, it's the fear of the future due to the precarious present conditions. It indicates someone who desperately wants to hope for a better tomorrow. An unrealistic hope is the only thing that he or she may have left to sustain them. More broadly, it also indicates someone who has shed a lot of tears over something and it cast a pall of anxiety and precariousness over the area inquired about. It does not preclude success, but indicates the need for hard work to make it happen. And it does indicate a missed opportunity, or at least one that has been perceived as such. In love, it indicates unrequited love, an unrealistic attachment to an ideal of how things should be or have been a turbulent relationship or a long distance relationship. The card points to feelings of inner turmoil caused by confusion and the inability to hear the inner guidance of the soul. Particular importance needs to be paid to the arrow, which indicates that the answer has been sought in the wrong direction. The Queen of Spades. A 
and she is different from the king of spades or the il namico. He's actually a jack. <clears throat> the il namico represents known enemies. She represents an unknown enemy therefore making the strength of this card far worse than its male counterpart. She holds a weapon and has no qualms about using it. She is a backstabber. This card, in fact, depicts someone who has already attacked and in real life can also indicate someone who is about to attack. It represents someone in whom we trust but who secretly wants to betray us. Someone who wears a mask of helpfulness and nicety so that you can lower your defenses and let you in on, their, on your secrets and their trust. Then the person will turn around and use their knowledge to inflict great pain upon you. This is a fundamental difference to the Namiko, the male version. Because this that person is a um, declared enemy, someone that you already suspect or dislike. This woman, okay, is someone that you're not quite certain about. It indicates gossip, slander, and unfriendliness. Someone who has made it your life's goal to destroy your reputation and will stop at nothing until they have succeeded. In love, it represents betrayal and someone who wants the couple to break up, usually so that they can steal the partner. But it can also represent an obnoxious ex-wife or girlfriend with an axe to grind. It represents false advice, being led down the wrong path. And basically, it can be summarized by the Latin motto, you must die so that I may live. It says this danger is a form of comes in the form of someone who nurtures a great hatred towards you and is difficult to unmask. Financially, it can warn of great danger or treachery, or contracts with sneaky hidden clauses, and someone who wants to obtain money by deception, fraud, and money laundering. We keep hearing this theft thing, but as I say, people don't always have to actually steal money from you. This is the ace of spades in this deck. And it indicates bad news. It does not describe the event causing the news, but underlines the negative emotional impact that something or someone will have on you. It foretells of a period of difficulty and sorrow, the failure of a project, humiliation, gossip, anger. In love, it heralds misunderstanding, disappointment, and separation. But the main impact of this is found in the representation of the card. The first is the opened letter, which heralds unexpected bad news. And the second is the woman's reaction to the letter. It indicates that whatever this event is, it will shake you to your core and will negatively affect you emotionally and on a very deep level. And that is caused by this person. Okay. These three cards. Now, for all I know, this could be the idea that maybe you done busted your dude and found out he's been paying prostitutes. I do not know. <laughs> okay. But this is a card that represents secrets. Anything done in secrecy, clandestine, and kept away from public knowledge. It also indicates something going unnoticed, as if invisible. Generally, it refers to anything unknown. But it also refers to blackmail, threats, obstacles, missed opportunities, 
adversity, and hollow victories. In love, it is a sign of faith, unfaithfulness and ulterior motives. It describes a person who is spineless and someone with the little man syndrome. But it also indicates something that takes place at night or after sunset. And it has a very pertinent link to the profession of espionage, private detectives, and secret services. Remember, he watches and decides what to buy. The Amalato, another spades card, the four. I don't know if maybe someone has recovered from an illness or perhaps maybe went to the doctor and there's something that they're hiding. But basically it foretells a period where you will be forced to interrupt your daily routine and visit places you would rather not go. Metaphorically, it represents any situation that is sick. This can be an unhealthy relationship, a personal flaw that needs healing, or a situation that is rife with pain, personal front, and or corruption. It can also indicate a pathological relationship with another or something that has been spoiled. It gives a connotation of something that is tainted and unclean. The card can act as a warning, the calm before the storm of a situation that seems still and okay, but that is eventually going to erupt and backfire. It also warns you of people or situations that will lull you into a false sense of security. It indicates people who are making you ill. Here is the Ten of Wands card. Ten of Clubs. Basically, it indicates activities that will go bust due to a miscalculation or proper planning. In love, it indicates inconsistency, lack of commitment, sleeping around, and an affair. It could also represent someone who cannot keep a promise or a secret. Basically, the card is about recklessness, impulsiveness, and careless mistakes that will cause you much grief in the future. Doing it anyway. Now, we read about the reverse letter. This is the two of diamonds. Diamonds all represent the material plane. It's called the letter. And it does not really change from its upright position. But it can describe a letter, a delay in the arrival of news, or news that is delivered anonymously. It could be a missing parcel, letter in the post, lost documents, or, or anything made of paper that may have been misplaced. It can also indicate bills to pay, expensive phone calls and bills, speeding tickets, court summons, notifications of court proceedings, or any unpleasant official document. It does not indicate, well, it kind of does indicate bad news. Uh, the upright version yeah, it's a long distance relationship over the internet perhaps. Here's the Ten of Clubs over here. Let's read the reverse. Here's a look. This is what I think is interesting. 
I have the Ten of Spades. I have the Ten of Wands. And I have the Ten of Diamonds. And traditionally, the Ten of Diamonds has always been, according to Mademoiselle Lenormand, was rather a dangerous, treacherous card. It never, ever... Uh, here's another Jack or Page. It never bodes well. So here we go to the Ten of... The Thief. Reversed. It simply says that all of the negative connotations of this card is magnified when it is reversed. Theft, loss, betrayal of confidence, betrayal or confidence tricks have an even greater impact whose aftermath is difficult to overcome. It heralds a painful event, situations that get worse and worse, an accident, treachery, a great misfortune, and even a loss of freedom. Basically, it can also represent heralding the downfall of someone who is close. Besides being a con man and a thief, it will delineate thoughts and intentions of, the, of a person. It describes someone who, may, who perceives that they may have been robbed in life, robbed by life of something or someone important to them. This is someone who feels hard done by, someone who, someone who is extremely affected by a state of inner emptiness. It refers to places where someone has been, oh, no, we don't want to do that. It can represent bu uh, buildings, hospitals, and prisons. But financially, it is connected to gambling, reckless investments, and loss. It can indicate personal loans given to people who have no intentions of repaying them. Now, I am trying to see well, upright near a significator card. It can indicate someone who wants to acquire something that does not belong to them with ulterior motives and a calculating mind. It indicates a particular situation. It can also indicate a condition of mental, emotional, physical, or financial drain. In other words, a very taxing situation on many levels. On the emotional level, it refers to betrayal and treachery. The Ten of Diamonds indicates all those practices that steal something from the soul. It is connected with the idea of spiritual deprivation. It refers to demeaning situations, immoral practices, or being forced to do something under duress. Financially, it is terrible. Because it heralds theft, the loss of money, extortion, money laundering, business offers that will be revoked, illegal activities, or obtaining things by deception, and all kinds of swindles. Now, here is the, I don't know what this is about, the uh, Lamante. It will typically describe a man from his late 20s to mid 40s. Usually fair complected, but not always. It is associated with the sense of longing, of having to wait. See how he's sitting? Now, it says... It can foretell of a welcome surprise, positive news, a passionate love affair, and the fulfillment of a dream. But it places great emphasis on feelings and that you are living through a particularly sensitive emotional time. Now, I don't know. We see there's a lot of agitation here. There's a lot of secrets being revealed. Maybe some self-doubt. I want to take a look at this. 
set of cards here with the conjure cards. And I don't know if these two cards here are telling me that whatever this news is, it's not going to be pleasant. But this could be somebody on the backside who's going to try to help you. But it's also caused by this character, the other person. And I think that's perhaps where, what I was trying to explain in the beginning. The fact that this King of Cups is not only fully hidden from us, his face and view, but his body language. It says that this is somebody that you did not know quite well, you didn't see the real truth, but that also the person who comes in kind of sort of to help you um, is not somebody well known to you either. It's just somebody who's there to help. I think I said that already. I kind of feel like I'm repeating myself, but... There he is again, the King of Hearts. The Three of Clubs. Three of Wands. And the Five. Now, Clubs, and it's falling on a Clubs card as well. Clubs tend to bring you messages and news. And although most times traditionally it's looked at as being positive news, it can also be news that, that will bring great anger. Now I want you to listen. <clears throat> Interference from a friend could cost you money, uh, could cost you a relationship or cash. Take off the blinders and see the real person. Conflicts that need to be dealt with swiftly do not stew in the situation, take care of business. Again, this idea of consider all the possibilities before jumping in with both feet. It can indicate new alliances and friendships, but there may be conflict. Well, that's what that looks like to me. Now... I'm wondering if now the situation comes out. Two different people, but the situation. Somebody who offers to help. Somebody who pretends to be a friend, but is not. Here, let me help. But is not. We will pull cards now. These are the Khalil Gibran, the Prophet cards. So formulate your question. I have not, like I said, I have not had a chance to bond with these cards yet, so I'm going to have to read you the meaning. I've got four more decks that I'm trying to learn right now. <laughs> yes, I am a woman obsessed. Number 40, the card says, no sunrise finds us where sunset left us. It is known as the farewell. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, let me uh, take a look. We wanderers, ever seeking the lonelier way, begin no day where we have ended another day, and no sunrise finds us where sunset left us. Even while the earth sleeps, we travel. We are the seeds of the tenacious plant, 
And it is in our ripeness and our fullness of heart that we are given to the wind and are scattered. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds deep. Huh. I'm trying to see if there is anything else here that it can teach me. Hmm. That's what I have for you. I hope that message helps. I'm going to read that one more time. No sunrise finds us where sunset left us. The farewell. Hope those messages help. Come on over. Click the link if you want a personal reading, an Akashic Records reading. You want me to look at your natal chart. Come on over. Read the article. Join in on the contest. And I hope to see you soon. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.